Hey, I'm Sue London, author of the best-selling Haberdasher's Regency Romance series. I play the surprisingly unobservant half-orc Ranger Elizabethe. You can find me online at buysuelondon.com, and I'm always on Twitter at at C-M-D-R-S-U-E. Yep, that's Commander Sue, because I'm a big old Star Trek nerd. Hey y'all, I am Emily Kaplan, and I will be playing the role of Claudia Baron Liebhaber, the not very notorious ROG et, and lover of bears and wearer of a smashingly great bear hat. In real life, I write the Josie Tucker mystery series under the name E.M. Kaplan and the forthcoming virtual vigilante series from Falstaff Books. Hey, y'all. I play Mal- I'm Misty Massey. I play Malibu, the cleric who's full of sunshine and who wants everyone to get along. In real life, I write the Mad Kestrel series of pirate novels, and I am an acquisitions editor for Lore Seekers Press. You can find me on Facebook and very often on Twitter, almost as often as Sue. (laughs) Hey, y'all. I'm Teresa Glover. I am the author of the Caitlin Kelly Monster Hunter series with Falstaff Books, and I'm also an editor at Falstaff Books. I also write for AuthorsEssentials.net and work with the Continual Con online on Facebook. Um, I play Baroness Ella. Moonbrook. And if you must ask questions about her, then you truly don't know who she is. Um, She is a high elf fighter in this game, and the rest of it is really just none of your business. Hi, I'm Melissa MacArthur, and I am the associate publisher at Falstaff Books, as well as an editor, an author, and lots of other things. Uh, I play Polly D. Arton, the country music bard who is searching for this solution to all the mysteries in her life and i am re Carr, the admiral of this asshole armada when i am not game mastering for all these lovely ladies i write the rules undying series which is published by both kindle press and by me i am also a co-writer with one and only rick walteri otherwise known as silas kane on the False Icon series, and I might have some more coming out later this year, but I can't announce anything yet, because I'm mysterious that way. All right, when last we left our intrepid adventurers, everything was fine, really, except for maybe Elisabetta, <laughs> who have, might have picked a fight with a plesiosaur, but other than that, I can't think of anything that would be wrong. How about you, lovely ladies? Everything is fine. We're off the boat. (laughs) We're not on fire. Are you? Okay, everyone. (laughs) The boat's on fire. And the mast is cracking. Yep, perfectly fine. Have you guys loaded up? And can you see where we left off? Yep. I see Mm. two little old people things there staring at us. Yes. As I said, you have all successfully gotten off the mast, except for Honey, who is currently like a Pokemon. He's just fainted in Elizabeth's arms. A kind of withered couple with steely gray hair and cloudy eyes have approached the scene of this ship. The, the lady is wringing her hands and kind of going, oh dear. And the gentleman beside her is basically cupping his ears going, what? What? Who's there? What do you do? I I hope that wasn't your boat because something happened to it. Oh, oh, oh we haven't seen a boat in, in quite some time. <laughs> you mean that's not your boat, y- young whippersnappers? Uh, it was burning when we got here. Oh, 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 that's, that's terrible. Hey, what? What are they saying, dear? Ella just rolls her eyes because this is obviously so beneath me. <laughs> they, they do approach slightly. The, the old man is squinting really hard. Hey, are they ladies? In their heart? Yes, yes, they're ladies. Oh, ladies. Hi. The old man is is waving, you think, or he might have some sort of twitching condition. 
but it might be a wave. Malibu waves back. What do they look like? They are, they are hush purvis, but, but I need to know what they look like. I, I'm terribly sorry. My, my husband's eyesight isn't what it used to, and he has trouble hearing me on account of not listening to me in the past 40 years. Do you <laughs> think you could introduce yourselves? Uh, how about you, you very, very tall, dark, and tall, fancy lady? Ella just looks at her. The, the old man kind of totters. He's like, eh? All you need to know is that I am Baroness Ella Moonbrook, and we have other business to attend to. So, is there something that you wanted? Oh, she sounds fancy. What you wearing, lady? <laughs> <laughs> I, I see some blurry forms behind you. Who are you? He, he points roughly in the direction of Polly. What you look like, darling? Polly wants to go over and um, walk over closer and uh, hug the lady. Okay, move your token. She's going to walk over there and give her a hug and say, hi. Hi, my name is Polly. Uh, please, would you roll a, a perception? If I can find it. <laughs> a, B, C, D. There we go. You think some, you must have brushed past something. Something touched your butt briefly. Oh! <laughs> but you're not sure what. Okay. <laughs> that was, um, interesting. Sir, did you touch my butt? I'm sorry, I I'm just trying to, to feel where the strange shapes are. Little lady, would you mind telling me what you look like? <laughs> well, I think I'm just going to have to hug him too and tell him that I am beautiful and blonde and I have really great assets. He gives you a very tight fatherly hug. With an accident, accidental slip on the side boob. But his hands were shaking. Claudia's going to go over and stand in the bushes. <laughs> the, the little old lady points at, at Malibu. Oh, oh, you look quite, quite sunshiny. Would you mind telling my husband what you look like? Well, I've got blonde hair. It's not as blonde as Polly's, but I've got blonde hair, like sun-streaked hair, and I'm out of suntan skin, and um, I I look like like Beach Girl. Oh, she sounds nice. Maybe she'll hug me like the one with the assets. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, come on over, Malibu. Purvis, stop. The little old lady says. Yeah, apparently we've landed on Pervy Island. <laughs> you go up and hug the old man? Sure. Polly did it. She's not dead. Make a perception check. <laughs> His hands are remarkably steady until he tries to hug you, and then they slip down and just brush the butt. Well then, and kind of reach back and move his hands off my butt. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, oh, you're so... Oh, Maybe. blonde. Take a step back. <laughs> oh, did I hear something rustling in the bushes? I do like things rustling in the bushes. Uh, where where'd the other two go? I think he just called me Butch. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I think he was talking about your underbrush. Okay, so Ella's pretty suspicious of these two, plus they're just being a complete waste of time. So I want to roll a perception and see if she notices anything about them. Oh, let's see if you do as well as last time. Oh, yes, of course. Again, it's hard to focus when I'm looking down my nose at everybody. I'm just saying. Just say what you rolled, please, for the people listening. A seven. Uh, once again, they're beneath you, Ella. <laughs> Sorry. They're not Noted. worth your time. Obviously. Everyone's beneath her. She's tall. Claudia, Elisabete, do you want to introduce yourselves or describe yourselves to the pervy old man? I mean, the stranger on the beach? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we rolled some really good stealth rolls. Can I have a stealth roll from Elisabete, the large half-orc woman in a 
small bush. <laughs> but I'm the same color as the bush. <laughs> We're not discriminating against bushes. Are you a green half orc? Is that what you're saying? Or are you the tawny brown of the scrub grass of this coastal climate? Exactly. I just kind of, just kind of blend in. Uh huh. You didn't say if you were the green or the tawny subgrass well, either. I am. I am. Uh, I'm supposed to be gray, but at the you know my picture here, I look a little pinkish gray. I just look like shadows. Yeah. Yeah. Roll well, that stealth check, please, Miss Ranger. Because you, you've been out in the sun. Oh, I got a 22 the first time, but we'll do it again. Oh, I see it up top. Sorry, roll 20 being stupid. <clears throat> That's all right. I, I, I got a 22 again. I'm real serious <laughs> about not wanting to meet them. Clearly, the fates have spoken. All right, with a 20. They, ah, I thought there were more ladies. Where did they go? Well, is is this an island? Huh? What did the lady say? The the little old woman said, oh, this is, this is... I believe the professor called it an archipelago. We we are the Shattered Islands. Oh, oh, I'm my. so sorry that you've ended up here. Why why did you come to our lovely islands? Oh, you're so precious. Your hair is like golden straw. Boat on fire. <laughs> oh oh, I thought that wasn't your boat though. Well, it wasn't our boat, We, but we were riding on it. Oh, whose who's boat is it? It doesn't is matter, it a... they're dead. I think he's dead. <laughs> she, she points to the body impaled on the prow. Oh, oh dear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh dear. What? What are you saying? There's a, there's a dead man on the end of the pointy boat. We just tried not to look at it. It was there when we got the boat. But the dead body <laughs> was there when you... Oh, it, you sailed it was, with the It dead was like man. one of those girls with the boobs, that mermaids that go on the front. But it was a little more gruesome. I heard boobs. Where are the boobs? On the front of the boat. The little old man has left the encounter. He has decided that he's going to make his way towards the boat slowly. He is getting rather close to the edge, and he is doddering a little. What do you do? Don't mind my husband. He just likes ladies. But he's harmless, mostly. Claudia's going to whisper from the bush, ask her if there's a village nearby. What was that? Is, is there a village nearby? Is there a village? There's a few. We have many settlements since nobody can leave. <laughs> nobody can leave. Why can't anybody leave? Oh, because, because the water won't let you. <laughs> You've never heard of the Shattered Island? No, can you tell me about it? Not really. I'm just a poor old... Well, we're out here on dates, you know. <sighs> That's all we ever do, dates. Except when we can find coconuts. Well, what's your name? Uh, my name is Martha. And what's your husband's name? Purvis. Purvis? Yeah, it's a family name. Comes from a long line of, well, he's supposed to have been a bard. But then a bard ruined his whole life. Oh no. A bard ruined my mom's life too. Oh. With that that music and the gyrations and it stole his mama away. It was so sad. But here we found a place that says that the bards make the infernals music. And they're banned. <laughs> so you, none of you lovely ladies would happen to be bards, would you? Nope, nope, none of us. Not at all. Nope. <laughs> oh, <sighs> Polly's going to move back over toward where Ma Malibu is. <laughs> Come here, Polly. <laughs> oh, Paris, watch your step. The, the little old man kind of stumbles. What do you do? He is getting closer to the dead captain of your ship impaled on the prow. Also, you know what happens when happy little fires start. There, there might be a little more fire now. 
say, well, could you um, tell us how to get to the village? We All we've had to eat is marshmallows, and we're a little hungry. Oh, oh yes, I'd be, I'd be happy to take you. If you're hungry, we can take you to the marketplace. They have the most delicious coconut stew, coconut pie, coconut cake, and coconut curry. God help me, we've landed on Gilligan's Island. <laughs> this was only supposed to be a three-hour tour. <laughs> Is there something warm around here? I can't see too well. Oh, please, please help my husband. I can't catch him in time. He's just going to fall on that stick and die. Claudia's considering it. Purvis, come back this way. Follow my voice. Because I'm not going <laughs> over there. I was told there were boobs here. <laughs> There are boobs over there, but there are a whole lot more boobs back here. What? Are you saying all you are lovely, firm young lady? Oh, very firm. Better than the island coconuts. Give me a persuasion <laughs> Who, me? Whoever's trying to convince the old man to abandon the boobs on his trajectory. Oh, Go ahead, Polly. It's all you. All right, I rolled a 21. Beeline back. Cla Claudia makes a, a, a retching noise behind the bush. <laughs> oh, my. Huh. He's surprisingly spry for an old guy. Hello, lovely lady. Yes, he's blatantly gone to Malibu instead of Polly. <laughs> and he's tired. <laughs> <Why? laughs> Purvis, these ladies are hungry. Would you like home cooking, or would you like something from the market? I think the market's probably the safer bet for our virtue. I think something from the market. <laughs> well, if you'll follow me, we'll take you there. Lead the way, pervy. <laughs> and they start heading north, past a bunch of coconuts, which they immediately stop to begin. We're supposed to be on dates. Dates! Oh, the coconuts look nice too, dear heart. <laughs> and they are trying. They have stopped and trying to gather this pile of coconuts. Do you guys want to do anything else? By the flaming ship with the dead guy on the brow. Nope. Wave goodbye to the ship. Bye, ship. <laughs> can I run over real quick and see if he has anything in his pockets? Of course you can. Dash over, please, and then give me a uh, investigation. I'll give you advantage because you are a thief and he's dead and can't fight you. I roll an 11. You don't find much except for some scraps of paper in his pocket and a pretty sweet ring with a skull and crossbones on it. Surprising since he's an independent shipping magnet. Can I put them in my pocket? You take all of it? Yep. Okay, yeah, it's easy. I mean, even for women's clothes, you have pockets enough for a ring and a piece of paper. Nice. He, he's also quite dead, and strangely, um, make a intelligence check. Claudia rolls a 17. The, he's not on the very end of the prow. He's halfway on the prow, and the prow only broke when the ship crashed. He does not have enough, like, although he is clearly stuck on the end, only the pointy bits are stuck out in multiple exit wounds on his belly. And something doesn't seem right. Must have pissed off a plesiosaur, too. Hmm. Well, his loot was a little bit lame. So Claudia's going to go back toward the others and sneak along behind them. He took out one thing, but his eyes are frozen quite wide with horror and still very moist. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm out here. Do you relay any of your findings to your lovely companion? Uh, I'm going to show him the ring and the paper. Papers. Or at least to Elizabeth. What's, what's on the paper? The papers are folded neatly, but there's nothing on them. They're just blank, even though they were carefully folded like a note would be. Okay, so can I roll an intelligence check to see if Ella would consider, like, invisible ink or something like that, or magical paper or something? 
anyone who has arcana can roll arcana. Anyone who wants to do a more, I guess, esoteric investigation can roll investigation. Claudia rolls a nine arcana. <laughs> it's paper. Ella, Ella rolls an 18. Polly rolls a seven investigation. Uh, it's paper, <laughs> Polly. Ella, though, you do get a faint hint of something citrusy. And you remember citrusy smelling paper being used by some of your cousins to exchange notes about their tryst with other cousins. It sounds about right. Um, so can I assume that I know that I can hold this over a heat source and make the word show up, or do I need to roll for that? I would, I would say with your background as a noble, it's been used enough. You, you okay. would know you need a heat source, but you'd probably want one not quite so raging as a whole boat. Well, I'll tell everybody that I know what this is and I know how to read what's on the paper, but we need to get to some place with a more controlled flame, whether that's a candle or a torch or something like that. And it's just not worth being right here right now, so let's go. Once we get to the okay. market, we could probably find something. I have incense. You hear a big creak, kind of a splintery sound, and then the mast breaks. The very sturdy mast? The very sturdy mast has, oh no! between the fire and that, has shattered where these little crack marks are. Little you will now babies. need some other form of transit to get back down. Or you'll have to climb the rock face to huh. explore more. It looked so. It looked well, fine. <laughs> it was fine when you crossed it multiple times, and I now it's sturdy. Into pieces. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that the boat's gonna get us anywhere anyway. Not while it's on fire. So no big loss. <laughs> Can I have perception checks, please? Claudia rolls a twelve. Malibu rolls a twenty-four. Malibu. Yes. You see, why is the water advancing quite so much? And why do you see a flipper waving and flipping off in the general direction of Elisabetta? I don't know, but we're going to keep walking this way. <laughs> Everybody, come on. The water's coming to visit. Is it, is it a dinosaur flipper or a shark flipper? It's a dinosaur flipper from a natural... Okay, yes. I'll give Polly that. Not Polly. Sorry, Malibu. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Everybody this way. <laughs> <laughs> it's blood streaked and doesn't look happy. Bye-bye. <laughs> nope, nope. Sorry. Lovely party. See you later. <laughs> yeah, Ella, you also see Big Flipper and the water kind of advancing more like a wall than a tide. Are you gonna? The little old couple are still gathering coconuts and kind of just teetering and talking about the weather right now. What do you do? Um, what if I used? Let's use. You also my, hear sizzling, like fire use, meeting water. Let's use my persuasion to get them to move along, like now, not in any other way, but the coolest way possible, obviously. And I rolled a five. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. You're the standoffish one now. I'm telling you, we get these coconuts, we can serve them at prime market prices. But we're supposed to get dates, Purvis. What do y'all do? I'm moving. <laughs> As you see. <laughs> I thought you were going to show us town. Yep, I'm with Malibu. Are, are you doing anything with the little old couple? Or are you just running from the wall of water? I'll say, which, which way is town? Since you're terribly busy, we can go ahead Hold and start on, no, walking. Hold on, we're just trying to get these, co we're going to take these to the market. Now, if you help us just get all these coconuts together, we can make a killing. I'll even give you some of the profit. Tiny portion since you're just a beautiful young lady. What do you say? I think if, if it'll make it go faster, we all grab a couple of coconuts and try to yep. hurry these people off. Okay. So you're taking the old couple, a pile of coconuts, and thus, finally, you know, as you're kind of walking into the forest, you hear a crash, and maybe a 
noise. The coconuts don't agree with somebody. <laughs> I, think, I think Nessie wants another bite of Elizabeth. <laughs> it might be. I'm so. just, you know, I'll just stand on the shore at night holding up a boom box. Talking to <laughs> Nessie. <laughs> In your flippers. <laughs> yeah, I got it. All right. So right now you're just on a little path heading up. Is there any, and you're all carrying a large supply of coconuts. Is there anything you want to talk about, ask about, or are you just going to follow the old couple who are very slow because they're carrying big, basically mesh bags full of coconuts and they're old. I've got They're... a lovely bunch of coconuts. Doodly doodly doodly. I'll go over to, I'll go over to the old woman, and yeah. say, "Let me carry that for you and take the big mesh bag." She takes your whatever little amount of coconuts. Really, um, yeah, you're now encumbered and can move it half speed. That's fine. There were a lot of coconuts. That's fine. So. What brings you lovely ladies to our island, archipelago? Uh, the market. We wanted to visit the market. Oh, I think you'll, you'll have to try the coconut fish curry. Oh, we want that to. It's spicy. <laughs> if you'll show us where the market is. Oh, we're walking. Don't you can't hurry things. Uh, meanwhile, uh... Does anyone walk near the old guy who's carrying a large bag of coconuts and is moving at one square a turn currently? No, but Claudia considers shooting him. <laughs> Elle is staying the hell away from that pervy old man. <laughs> Did I see a large lady somewhere? Uh, or is that your bodyguard and a man? Ella I'll, just kind of sneers at him and goes, "I'm a dude." Give, 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 give the bag to me. Give it, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> you take. Oh, oh, you're a big one. Grr. <gasps> oh, I like them when they're feisty. Oh, what a stripper! He kind of nudges your way. I just want to scowl at him, give him this like withering look of, "If you touch me, you will die." Seriously, though, do you want me to shoot him? <laughs> <laughs> no, because that'll only slow us down further. <laughs> Malibu is generally all sweetness and light, but right now she's totally getting what El what Baroness Ella thinks all the time. <laughs> Just, ah! You did get the hiney touch. All right. I, I did. Is there anything else you're asking specifically, or do you just want to wander slowly to the market while avoiding the pervy old man taking up the rear and probably looking at all your butts? Let's just keep going. I don't care if he looks. I'll just pull out the rapier and just kind of hold it in my hand as, as a deterrent. All righty then. Dun, dun, dun. Don't worry, I'm moving y'all. Moving on up, moving of the market that I know. It's a different map. Wow. After all these years, we're on a new map. <laughs> we're on a new map. And there's a kitty. All right. Yes, as you walk in this lovely section, the streets kind of go from sand to looks like tamped down sand like it's been clearly made into a road and there's little stones guarding sections of greenery and there's a cat staring at you as well as well looks like a man in armor guarding lots of stalls seems to be you know a surprisingly posh marketplace considering you've only seen a burning beach but yeah, some of the architecture looks very Eastern influence. Some of it looks very Western. Some of it doesn't even look like anything human. But you're all being judged by a kind of golden tabby cat with odd colored eyes that's just staring at you. I'm going to judge the cat right back. <laughs> is there just one guard for all these stalls? What kind of security is around here? Well, so far you see a guard ahead. He doesn't seem to be too concerned yet, but there is down below a uh, a woman with some swords and daggers 
displayed over her little benches, as well as several crates. And she's kind of sizing y'all up. I try to make friends with the kitty. You want to try to make friends with the kitty? How are you trying to make friends with the kitty? Through normal or extraordinary means? I mean, it's not the worst idea we've ever had. (laughs) I'm sure Elizabeth still has some fish in her pockets from her swim or whatever. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, you smell a fish and you're paying attention. The cat purrs and runs under your hand and immediately starts marking you. Yeah, the, the cat the cat seems to be there. Keeps staring judgmentally at Claudia and her ears. There are also two people down at the bottom going, hoo, 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 chop, 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 hoo, 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 chop, 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 and doing some sort of martial arts ritual. Well, that's seems interesting. To be practicing, not actively trying to kill each other. Um, do I see a fire source or heat source anywhere where I can try to read those notes? Because obviously nothing else is capturing my interest. Um, you do smell something delicious, which probably means that there's a cooking fire nearby. Maybe just past the guard? Okay, I'm going to go in the general direction of the smell to find the fire to read the, the note. Well, the little old couple think, oh, oh, yeah. They're, they've gone and started, hello, Henry, we brought new people. Another boat tried and failed. And the guard just like, hmm, just turns and looks, hmm, the cat's purring. Then people start looking at you. And there's a lot of, hmm. The woman that's in the, the woman that's ahead of us in among the crates, does she, is she looking at us? Can I go talk to her? Yeah, she's looking at you. Okay, I'll go she's over. All righty. Well, let's, and I'll say Hello. You buying or are you looking? Um, just curious about where we've ended up. You're at the market. I sell knives and swords and assorted blades. You buying or are you just looking? Ooh, I'm looking, but I think I'm going to go tell somebody that we'll be buying. Because one of my friends will. I don't get paid for looking. So look fast oh. and move along. It, do, do her wares look high quality? Are you an expert in swords or blades? Otherwise, give me a perception check. We'll go perception. A lot are very shiny, and there's some in the back that she kind of keeps on the crates that are that look shiny and new and not sea weathered. Okay. Well, that yeah, that was kind of the thing. Was it stuff she scrounged off of Rex, or is it actually? No, there's a lot in the front that's that's got some pitting. Okay. Are you looking or buying <laughs> to the new people coming up? She's got a shtick. <laughs> oh, Polly's kind of wanting to make her way down toward the high yaw couple at the bottom um, and may plot her kazoo and play Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> You're going to openly play music. Noted. Make a performance check. Polly's going to get us killed. Uh, Polly rolls a 16. They, for a while, they get in, and then they both turn and look at you. The, the, the man, shh, shh, don't, 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 illegal, illegal. Oh, I'm so sorry. Why? You knew here. Don't do that. Karen, get you. Who? Oh, no, don't not say. Let's run. And they run off. I'm going to just slip my kazoo right back into its pocket and then go <laughs> and tell the other people what happened. Uh, the old one's like, we don't serve your kind here. And she just rolls up her knives and starts walking away. Like, packs everything in her crates and starts walking away. Were there any short swords that look better than mine? Not, you knew through perception. There were, there were a few, but she's now rolled up. And now the guards are, this guard is sort of, t- looks like he's turned his head your way. I'm going to kind of hide behind Elizabeth. <laughs> Claudia, are you doing anything? Uh, Claudia's gonna follow her nose also toward the good smells. See if she's she can. If you um... find some pie, get me some. <laughs> <laughs> she, it, especially if she can find any pie to either uh, take or perhaps buy. The uh, the good smells are coming from just beyond the little old couple and the guard. 
this away. Does she find any? Oh, there's a there's a, a lovely bald man with a beard selling stews, curries, and assorted dumplings. <gasps> dumplings. He does have fire under his walk and steamers, and. I mean, if you like that sort of food, it smells very pungent, very fishy, and there's a lot of coconut in the air. But it kind of <laughs> smells good. All Where right. are the dumplings? I want dumplings. Right over here. The dumplings are up by where Ella and Claudia have gone. There is a guard, though, looking at you, and he's going, hmm. I heard music. Does he say that to me? To Malibu? He, he's, no, you just hear him say, I heard music. I didn't hear anything, Henry. No music here. No, no. So, you don't hear anything, Purvis. Ella has enough presence of mind to know that she should probably try to buy something before she tries to use the fire. So she's going to look over the food and see, you know, what's what's there and what looks good. Oh, new customers, yes. Would you like a free sample? I have shumai. He lifts the lid and shows these little dumplings with little prawn heads sticking out of the tops of them. Sure, I'll try one of those. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, he starts handing out the little tiny delicious dumplings. With me new too, customers. me too. Try, you'll, I guarantee you'll buy. I have wild boar buns just about to be finished only whatever you can trade make me an offer you wouldn't happen to have any coconuts would you he says eyeing the coconuts you're carrying i have a whole bag of coconuts <laughs> yeah we've got coconuts we've got plenty of coconuts coconuts up the wazoo hey where are our coconuts who <laughs> old couple thing um Surely they won't miss couple. <laughs> so, is is the is the dumpling good? Is is it not good? It's moist, succulent, and full of shrimp and coconut. Okay, so decent. Um, it's got like a sea flavor in it, like maybe seaweed, um, or it was simmered in salt water. So I want to offer to buy both enough food and the use of his fire to read the notes for whatever a, two coconuts will get me. Oh, I give you some dump. Oh, two coconuts? That'll make me a few batches. Of Did you hold there? Do you want some of the boar ones, sweetie? They're very succulent. Sure. He gives you a tray of little half-moon-shaped dumplings, more of the shumai, and a bowl of curry. And he kind of moves his um, walk to the side and there is a fire in a pit. Okay, so I'm going to pull out the notes and try to hold them over the flame. Not where they're going to burn, but just so that the um, writing will show up. Oh, give me a dex check. Sure. It's easy, don't worry. Ah, there we go. Okay. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a five. You set the first piece of paper on fire. <laughs> All right. Hold well, that shit. thought. <laughs> hey, do you want me to help you? <laughs> While the, fi the paper is going on fire, can I have a perception check from Polly and Elizabeth? Polly rolls a 16. There's a strange creature just staring at both of you. And the cat. And the badger. And he's licking his lips. Where is he? Do you see my ping? Ah. Yeah. Behind what look like some silk robes and shirts and sashes. It's not a style very familiar to people from the West. Uh, Polly wants to make sure her banjo is tucked up under her hair real well and <laughs> kind of wander <laughs> over there um, toward the lick lipping creature and ask about his wares. He's feathered. Oh, lovely lady, lovely dress. Would you like an obi, a kimono, a gi, anything for a lovely lady? I see you have coconuts. I'd love to trade. So, uh, what would one coconut get me? 
This little handkerchief. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what about two coconuts? Two handkerchiefs. How many coconuts am I carrying? Uh, let's see. Average. <laughs> what is the average unladen weight of a person carrying coconuts? Uh, you could <laughs> probably carry about six. <laughs> but he's also staring at the coconuts behind the coconuts. Lovely lady could get any dress she wants. Yes, if you'd be happy to see my boss, if you know what I mean. Um, I don't actually know what you mean. My boss, good connections, but loves ladies. Not many new ladies come to the island. Who's your boss? I'll give you any dress you want if you go see my boss. Oh, very powerful man on the virus. Most powerful man in the whole market. I bet he's pervy too. Captain. Captain has shit. Very powerful man. Likes blondes. I think we might have impaled him. <laughs> uh oh. Your captain had dark hair. <laughs> Honey. Meanwhile, Honey, who is very, very weak and still on the verge of fainting, is picking a fight with the cat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, I'll pick them both Honey up. Honey and the cat are having a cat fight. I will. I will pick them both up now. 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 Come on, let's go get something to eat. We're, we're I'm going to go back over that. and say, excuse me, sir, um, I'll be right back and take the cat. <laughs> Let me help you with that one. Ooh, can we keep, keep it? Can we it, keep honey. it? <laughs> if we feed him, that'll Can't calm him down. My offer. I will. Thank you. Toodles. Hang on. Let me try to steal some dumplings for the hangry cat. You're going to steal dumplings. Okay. Roll me stuff. Or sleight of hand. This would be sleight of hand. Claudia rolls a 17. Let's see how he does. You seem to get the dumplings out from under. You can swipe, like, one tray. They are shrimp dumplings. I don't think that, that honey and the cat will need a ton. Yeah, it's like, like three. Unless you want to be greedy and go for more. Uh, I'm not that hungry right now, but uh, I do want to see what happens if I toss them to the animals. You're going to from <laughs> where you are, or are you moving to toss no, them I'm to gonna, the animals? No, I'm going to move closer. The, Plus, I think somebody's carrying them, so. What happened? Oh, where are our coconuts? She's going to start Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will take the bag of coconuts and give it back to the old woman, keeping the two or three that I picked up on my own. She almost falls over from the weight of the coconuts. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, well. So heavy. Drag it. <laughs> so heavy. Yeah, be careful there. Next thing you know, you're trapped in the back of a van. <laughs> All right, yep. so you toss dumplings to who first, the cat or the badger? Together, I want them to be friends. You throw two pieces of food into the middle of the two of them, or just describe what you do. Wait, is uh, is Polly carrying them, or somebody carrying Polly's them? Polly's carrying the cat. Zabete has Okay. Honey. All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll hand one dumpling to each animal at the same time. See? Right. Friends! <laughs> the, the cat goes nuts and immediately eats it. Honey... Good kitty kitty! Honey sniffs it and turns his nose up. Oh, Are you serious? Honey, honey is feeling worse than I thought. This is, this is not good. This is bad. This is bad. I've seen the things that honey will eat. I check the badger over for further injury. Maybe there's a vet in the house. Yeah, the the bad he's not looking so good. He he did have two death saves. He he's kinda clinging to life and doesn't want to eat. And he's got new scratches from the cat and he's going Maybe maybe if somebody chews it up first and then spits it at him. 
The cat, meanwhile, is looking <laughs> at the other dumpling. So while all of this is going on, Ella's figured out yes. that she fumbled her deck safe because she's trying to hold on to too much crap. So she'll put the dumplings and the shumai and all of that into her bag. She'll hold, put the bowl of curry down and then try again with reading um, the next Call note. evens or odds? Evens. Ah. All right. So yeah, the first note is completely burned. Okay. You've got the second one. Okay. So is that another dex check? Yep. Okay. It's simple. You just gotta beat a five. Well, I mean, you're, you're not carrying quite anything. A lot. Okay. You have successfully put the note over the fire, and some words appear. What does it say? Charlie, Bosley, get orb. Is what you can make out. With little check marks by get orb. I'm I'm peeking over Ella's shoulder. Hmm. Does anyone on their character sheet have the orb of contacting your superiors? Nope. I... Anyone remember the last person who had it? The orb. Hmm. I do not have it. I don't appear to have it. I don't see it. No idea. I'm just petting the cat. <laughs> Well, this note says someone was trying to get it, and none of you have it. That's not good. Yeah, you know, it's only a magical artifact that lets you communicate across vast distances and as a way to get to your benefactor who could possibly get you off an island, but it's probably not important. Nah, not really. Anyone have it on their sheet? Polly? Ella? I don't Claudia? No. Would it be an equipment? It would be an equipment if anyone had it. I do not have it. If I lie, can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have it. <laughs> oh, nice. So yeah, the, the, the orb that, that would have been entrusted to your group to contact your contact Bosley um, seems to be missing. Dun, dun, dun. Well, shit. <laughs> can I add it? No. <laughs> Also, the the guy at the dumpling table suddenly goes, "Where did my dumplings go? Those are my samples. They've been out all day." The cat suddenly starts to. Go, eh, 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 eh. Polly's gonna whack it on the back real hard and go, "You're a cat. Get over it." <laughs> make a make a dex dex save, please, Polly. Polly rolls a twenty. You manage to dodge just in time as the cat vomits and then curls on its side and starts shaking. Maybe you shouldn't hit the pussy so hard. <laughs> also, the, the pussy. guard is now like, oh, hmm, what's going on here? Wait, are those the same dumplings that I ate? Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, these, this was the, the, the three samples. that you swiped. Oh, thank the, God. <laughs> You just swiped three off the table that were easy to get. The displays. <laughs> Did you just kill Karen's cat? <sighs> dun, dun, dun. I'd like to speak to the manager. <laughs> <laughs> it's not dead yet. <laughs> All right. So our game may be done, but never fear you know, junior adventurers, we are also here to answer your questions. So, of course, we have our lovely Discord, which gets to cut the line, and we're going to use their questions first. Are you girls ready? As we're we'll ready ever be. as we'll ever be. Always. <laughs> yeah, now, please note that we shoved Emily into a bag of holding um, because she's adorable, and she always steals all our thunder answering the questions, so she will not be participating. But we can answer for her, right? Sure. Yes. Always. Of course. <laughs> okay. So, question number one. It's truly embarrassing. <laughs> yes. If it's truly embarrassing, we'll make sure to answer it for her. From our Discord, Saldriana has asked, if you were to take one of your real life skills and twist that into a superhero name, who would you be? For example, I am Captain Charisma. It's Teresa. I would <laughs> probably be the kitchen wizard. Um, 
because I really love to cook and play in the kitchen. Uh, I just need magic to make the dishes go away. That's pretty awesome. How about you, Missy? I, I would be wise mom because <gasps> I have got the mom look down pat and nobody can resist the mom look. So <laughs> Is that worse than the DM look? Oh, yeah. It's a Ooh. lot more dangerous because, see, the DM look doesn't involve the inherent guilt that the mom look has. So there's levels. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Melissa, please save me from the uh, mom look. <laughs> I, Melissa, I would be the comma conqueror. Gosh. <laughs> All writers fear. <laughs> I, I'm sorry in advance. Um, you clearly have not seen... Uh, I believe there was one book I had where my entire editorial notes were, this is excellent, clearly been edited. Do you know what a comma is used for? <laughs> it's used nice. in the time you take a breath, right? Oh, God. Unless Let's you not get walking chat. comment. <laughs> there's, there's the walking comma and the Shatner comma, and they are different. You know, I showed that meme in class one day, and people actually believed that I was serious, and I had to explain it. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and you I can have... always use commas for decoration because they're pretty. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> I, I are think commas, but... are my fa commas are my favorite curly bitch. Oh, uh, I, I believe really like Cindy Collins. Yeah, 95% of my editorial feedback were commas. I actually did the percentages because I'm that lame, so... Sorry, editors. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to oh, speak for English. Between me and John alone, Melissa has her hands full with fixing commas. <laughs> yeah, and I think, um, Rachel, I think your shingles is up next on my editing list, right? It, it is, actually. It would be very nice. <laughs> I, I will warn you, I don't know how to use a comma. It's 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 my ADHD, really. That's but I'm the comma right conqueror. Now. Save me, comma conqueror! Save me to the rescue. Right. And everyone knows that Emily is, of course, Lady of the Dance because she's awesome, and we're answering for her tonight. I think I would be Baroness Breadslut, the person who has flooded Instagram with so many carbohydrates that they've actually started my hashtag. Like you can actually follow my hashtag now, so. I oh feel like I've accomplished something. That's awesome. Um, nothing quite like the California prune board liking one of your posts to really make you feel like you've arrived. That's pretty cool. So moving on from superheroes, we have another Discord question from Aaron slash Tiggy. I don't know if it's Aaron and Tiggy or if Aaron and Tiggy share a body, but we don't assume and we don't shame here. What's the best way you ladies have found to stay sane slash less crazy during COVID? Uh, um, uh, okay, I can go. Uh, my son gave me a game called Ring Fit Adventure for Christmas last year, right before we uh, found out that we were going to be locked indoors for the foreseeable future. And it's a video game, but it's also for exercising. And you play the game by you have a, a, a leg strap and a, a ring con that you hold in your hand and they you use those to do the exercises and your exercises are all about defeating monsters and so some days i defeat a hell of a lot of monsters when i play that game because <laughs> it's either that or start tearing the walls down <laughs> that's pretty awesome how about yeah. you melissa i discovered that roll 20 exists <laughs> <laughs> and we took you in and out. Yes. There. Yes. So, um, been playing D and D, uh, and um, yeah, the, the internet's a pretty cool place. Who's your favorite DM? You are very good. That was a trick question. Emily would answer it as me as well. Haha. <laughs> Last shout out to smart. Nick O because she has exactly. ears. Teresa. <laughs> My sanity recipe, being as far as it will take me, includes an eldritch mix of audiobooks, coffee, and sorting and alphabetizing magic cards. Because I have a really lot of magic cards, 
And it's very soothing to sit there and type them into a database and make them all organized and alphabetized and pretty and listening to hours of audiobooks while I do it. Oh, Teresa, that sounds fantastic. I need to do that with my happy planners. I know, right? <laughs> if, if anyone couldn't tell from my previous answer, I've made a lot of bread and I've made all kinds, everything from really like straightforward, no need for ingredient things to baguettes. You know, babkas, tangzong, sandwich loaves. If, if, wow. Oh, and I made croissants from scratch because that's what you do when you slowly lose your grip on reality. Hence, I work out every day to deal with all these uh, these lovely carbs. Oh, I've got an editor question, editor question, and we have some, some lovely, I think I've, it's three editors yeah. versus one writer here right now. Hey. Oh, no. I, I'm defending Emily's honor. Yes. Okay, this is the question from Onyx Oracle, also known as Daniel in parentheses, also on Discord. It's the writer question, but it's really an editor one, I think. Which is better, third person or first person for fantasy writing and why? And I want to hear from Melissa first. All right, so for fantasy, I'm going to go with third person because fantasy has so many characters a lot of times that you really need to see it from multiple points of view. So it's going to be really hard to do that in first person. I mean, you probably could, but it's going to be hard. She said hard. Do you have Real a follow-up? Hard. Fellow Falstaffian, that would be you, Teresa? Uh, no, I'd, I'd agree with Melissa because the conventions of fantasy are typically looking at a very rich and complex world from multiple points of view. The, it's really not going to be easy to do that well in first person. Um, it's going to be a lot clearer both to the writer and to separate those personalities to do it in third. And um, Misty? Actually, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, we did actually. I think Teresa, Teresa pinged on, on the right word, um, do it well. If you can do it well, it doesn't matter. I'm reading a book right now called The Bone Shard Daughter which is a, a new release that just came out last week. Um, I think the author's name is Andrea Stewart. And it's, it's really good so far. It is, it is um, high fantasy, and it has multiple characters. And each chapter is written from the different characters' point of view. Two of them are in first person. The rest are in third. And you would think that would be confusing and weird, but it actually works. I'm enjoying it very much, and I'm not having any trouble keeping any, everybody separated. So, yeah, I was I thinking that. I've seen, I've seen books before where it's had one person be kind of the first person point of view, and then the other characters be third. But mm -hmm. I haven't seen it with two. I might have to read that. That sounds good. I, first I do remember a book by Steve Weatherall called Shoot the Dead, which does that, and I enjoyed that very much. So, not to good. give a shout out to the boys, but. <laughs> Especially I'll give it. Listening. I'll give it. <laughs> she doesn't know. Um, I'm weird because I've done both. I have done both third person and first person. So I don't have a preference. It's whatever suits the story. I found a lot of urban fantasy. That specific subset of fantasy actually does really well with first person. Because it tends to be more of our world and, and the supernatural. It kind of, you can get that limited view that brings more horror elements in. So I think there's room for both. As long as you can do it right, which I make no illusions that I do it right. Emily, she does it right. And she will say that since I'm representing her as the writer's guild this go. Okie dokie. I think it's time for another question. Oh. <laughs> this is an easy one, just a quickie. Zach of All Trades asks, you all go on Family Feud. Who do you want to oppose you, ladies? Come oh, on. The boys. It's definitely. Yeah, it's got to be the boys. Oh. Yes. Yeah. So I think we should do it. At Jothers and Dragons Con exclusive, I think we should have the Calamity Janes versus the Chronicles of Calamity and see which Calamity comes out on top. Make oh, it so, yes. Drew. You've been challenged. Please. Please. <laughs> yes. 2021, folks. <laughs> I think it's a thing. All, All right. right. So I think this is where we will call it a day. 
Stay tuned for next time where we find out if our uh, intrepid adventurers are indeed pussy killers or if they just had a case of bad dumplings. Authors and Dragons is brought to you under a Creative Commons license, meaning you are free to share this material so long as credit is given to those who created it, which is us, the people you just heard play the game. Opening and closing themes performed by the Gore Core 4. Authors and Dragons! Where are the boobs?